Houston and the surrounding region. This is a land of opportunity and can-do spirit. Our region is the kind of place where big ideas typically become larger than life realities. Throw any challenge our way and we meet it head on. But are we really ready for anything? He ran back into the house to save us, but we were already outside. If only we had agreed on a plan ahead of time, he might still be alive. The water rose so fast. We were so scared. The Houston region is home to more than six million people, with the majority living about 40 feet above sea level in a major hurricane landing zone. Since 1851, more than 60 hurricanes have struck the Texas Gulf Coast, nearly one-third of them making landfall as a Category 3 or greater. And the Galveston hurricane of 1900 still ranks as the deadliest storm in U.S. history, killing more than 8,000 people. More recently, Hurricane Ike devastated the Gulf Coast in 2008 along a path very similar to that of the Galveston hurricane. While Ike's death toll was relatively small, the property damage totaled about $32 billion, making Ike the third costliest Atlantic hurricane in U.S. history. Even when the hurricane season misses us, we run the risk of being engulfed by violent storms, tornadoes, or devastating flooding. No one who lived here in 2001 is likely to forget Tropical Storm Allison, which remains the costliest tropical storm in U.S. history, causing more than $5 billion worth of damage to the Houston region. Our disaster threats don't stop with destructive weather. Houston is known as the energy capital of the world, a great honor, but one that makes us vulnerable to chemical spills, plant explosions, and other industrial accidents. Vast numbers of pipelines extend in all directions of the region, carrying flammable fluids under our neighborhoods. And hazardous cargo barrels down our freeways every day, around the clock. In addition, more than 50 million passengers are served by our three airport system every year. And we run one of the nation's busiest international shipping ports. Our major corporations produce trillions of dollars in annual sales. We are one of the nation's largest centers for world trade. Our size and concentration of industry makes us a prime target for terrorist attacks, just like any other major U.S. city. After 9-11, I realized Houston could be a target, too. We were in a tall Houston downtown building, and I remember evacuating that day. It seemed like a bad dream. How could this be happening? On American soil, 9-11 opened everyone's eyes to the fact Houston is in danger, too. No one likes to think about disasters, but they can happen here just like in every other part of the world. The question is, are you prepared to survive them? Your best chance for safety and survival from any disaster is for you and your family to be ready long before a disaster ever hits. And the best way to be prepared is to do these three steps. Make a plan. Build a kit. Stay informed. Doing these three steps can help save your life and the lives of others. But remember, disaster can strike at any moment. So you should take these three steps right now, beginning with making a plan. A good disaster preparedness plan gets you ready for just about anything, from an unexpected explosion to an event that you can see coming for days in advance, such as a hurricane. 
A plan helps to organize what is absolutely essential to the well-being, safety, and survival of your loved ones, pets, and yourself in the event of an emergency. When every individual and family has a good plan in place, it allows our various government agencies to successfully put their disaster plans into action for the region as a whole. These organizations are well coordinated with each other and have planned and trained for all types of disasters. Response and recovery efforts can be slowed down when citizens are not prepared. When everyone has a plan, everyone is safer. It's important that your plan has a way to account for everyone in your family, wherever they are. In case your home is affected by the disaster, designate a meeting place away from home where your family will automatically gather. A park, a neighbor's yard, anywhere that is easy to get to and easy to remember. Also, choose a backup location farther away, even in another town, in case the devastation in our area is widespread. It's possible that cell phone service won't be working, and phone lines could be down or overloaded during a disaster, keeping you from making contact. But having a designated meeting location is something everyone can rely on. I couldn't get to the school to pick up my daughter. I couldn't get through on the landlines, and my cell phone was dead. It was a horrible feeling not being able to reach my family. When planning, write a list of all important phone numbers you might need, such as your hospital and your children's schools. Your phone list should also include one out-of-town contact person that everyone in your family should be instructed to check in with in case of emergency. Houston 911, do you need the police department? And remember, phones? calling 911 is the best way to summon the authorities if you need help. If you have kids in school, you shouldn't rush to pick them up. Schools are required to have a disaster response plan in place and parent interference can disrupt it. Spend some time now learning the details of your school's preparation plans and specifically how to communicate during a disaster. Then, in the heat of the event, there will be no questions about what actions you should take. Many of us spend most of our day at work, so you should plan for this as well. Every commercial building is required to have a fire escape plan, but does it go any farther than that? Find out if your company is ready for disasters and what it plans to do to protect its employees. If a plan doesn't exist, urge your company to create one. If you can't get to your house, or if it is destroyed, the first priority is to take care of yourself and your family. But you also need to account for your home, your belongings, and your identity. It's a good idea to make a packet of vital documents and a video recording of all your home's contents and store it with your family's designated out-of-town contact for possible insurance purposes later. Some members of our community will need special assistance during an emergency. If you don't have access to transportation, and you are not a part of your family's or neighbor's readiness plan, then you should pre-register for transportation assistance. All you have to do is dial 211, and you should do it today. 211, how may I help you? By registering okay, now, like if an evacuation order is issued for your area, assistance? emergency management personnel will contact you to schedule your transportation. If you okay. wait until disaster strikes, it will likely be too late to get special help. Making a plan is the critical first step in disaster readiness. There are many resources available online to help you determine what your plan should include. These can be found at www.readyhoustontx.gov. Putting a plan in place gives you clarity and peace of mind. But to be truly ready, you'll need supplies. The next step in disaster preparedness is to build a disaster kit. You should gather enough water and non-perishable packaged and canned food to last three to seven days. You will need one gallon of water per person per day. Beyond food and water, several other items should be in your kit, including medications, toiletries, a manual can opener, bug repellent, sunscreen, radio, flashlight, batteries, and extra clothes. You should build a kit for every person in your family. 
You also need to build a kit for every pet, which should include their food and water, medications, pet carrier, leash, a recent photo, and immunization records in case the pet needs to gain access to a shelter. Keep your disaster kits in an easily accessible place in your home and make sure all family members know where it is. Of course, you may not be home when a disaster hits, so it's also important to have a portable disaster kit to help you be prepared for anything, no matter where you are. You need to pack kits for your car and workplace so you're ready at all times. In many cases, such as a chemical emergency, you may be instructed to shelter in place. You need to be ready to protect yourself inside your dwelling, not just a kit for going, but a kit for staying. In addition to ample water and food, your home kit should include duct tape and plastic sheeting for making your home airtight, fluorescent lanterns, flashlights, batteries, portable radio, and a regular phone with a cord long enough to reach a safe room. Finally, your kit isn't complete if it isn't up to date. Set a time every six months to rotate fresh food, water, and medications into your supplies. A good way to remember is to do this when daylight savings time begins and ends. You can find many more details online at www.readyhoustontx.gov about what should go into your kit. You'll also find planning tools, checklists, contact numbers, and links to other government agencies throughout the region. Authorities in your area already have a plan in place for an emergency, but the success of their plan depends on you. Knowing what to do and what not to do can make a huge difference, so it's important that you stay informed. Your best source for information during a disaster will be News Radio 740, KTRH 740 AM. This is the Houston area's primary emergency alert station. In the event of an emergency, listen and wait for authorities to give specific instructions on what to do. Following these instructions will be the best course of action you can possibly take. During a disaster, emergency response personnel have a lot to deal with in a short time. They can do their jobs much more effectively if emergency channels and roadways are clear. You can help by staying in your home and only calling 911 if you have an immediate emergency. As we saw with Hurricane Rita, Evacuating an area this large and populated is extremely difficult without a coordinated and cooperative effort from all citizens. If an evacuation is ordered, do not make assumptions or take unrecommended actions. We're going to talk about an evacuation around. In the case of hurricanes, you can find out right now if you are in a storm surge evacuation zone and learn the appropriate routes and procedures for your area. Your main goal is staying informed and understanding the risks you and your family face in every situation. I can't say enough about having a plan. It gave me peace of mind just knowing that we were ready. Having our supply kit ready made a huge difference. The work we have done ahead of time has made my family safer. Make a plan. Build a kit. Stay informed. Are you ready?